My name is Steve. I'm a rideshare driver, or at least I was till that night. This is a tale of caution for anybody who's thinking about getting behind the wheel. I disappeared and went to heaven. These are nearly invisible, water resistant, and virtually endless range. Can you hear me now? No. You new here? I be beg your pardon? What happened to the old couple? Used to run this place. They moved on. Life is all one big scene. All you've got to set up is the circumstances. Do you two recognize me? Because I should. Saint Studios, Unfettered. How some guy made a bunch of movies that you've never heard of and had a blast. Oi. Yeah. <laughs>
probably 16 of uh, Saint Studio Films movies with Curtis Everett. I came a long way to make a lot of money. Hey, calm your ass down now. Calm down. Total, as of today, I've been in 40 movies and seven major TV shows. I just, um, just earlier this week, just did uh, two days on NCIS New Orleans. Uh, Curtis is laid back. You know, he's laid back. He's he's not yelling at you, you know, telling you, oh, I want to do it this way. He's more about, well, let's just do it. You know, if it works, you know, it works. If not, we'll do it again. Well, I'm John St. Clair, and I'm about to get taped. There we go. Awesome. Copyright infringement. <laughs> I like to consider myself an actor. Um, I think I've been in five or six roles so far. I've only been doing this for like a year and a half. I get a message from Curtis saying, hey, John, uh, you know, I've got this role for you. It's in uh, this film called Daddy's Little Princess. And, uh, you know, I want you to be the lead in it. And I was like, whoa, oh, okay. You know, here's this kid, never taken an acting class, nothing like that. You know, only had three roles and bam, you know, here's this guy, you know, offering me a lead, don't even know him. I was like, you know, let me see the script. Uh, the only thing that threw me off with Curtis is uh, he doesn't like to say cut. So, you know, that, that really threw me off at first. But there again, it is just a, 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 a part of procedure that's been taken out. So you get used to it and you continue to go on, you know, and, 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 and do your thing. My name is Blair Kelly. Uh, what do I do? A little bit of everything. Um, I'm an actor, writer, director, stunt guy, uh, fight choreographer, stunt coordinator, effects guy, um, producer, did I say that? Mm. Producer, um, cinematographer, I think that's it. I think that's, yeah. that's pretty. Uh, PA, um, yeah. Every, every if it's if it's in the realm of, of filmmaking, I've yeah. Chris, you there be some fancy shoot? Well, I brought a couple of friends of my own. Whoa, 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 whoa Turbo, easy. Do you want to talk for a minute? Maybe parlay for a minute? I didn't come here to talk. I came here to kill. Oh, you came here to kill. Well, I came here to win. Now, why don't you just go ahead, off your bait, so I can off you. Because that's the only way this is going to work. Ain't nobody leaving here with that money but me. You ain't getting through me. I think we're going right through you. You're nothing but a man. Oh, and you think you something else. There's just a few things you ain't figured out yet. Like what? Uh, I don't want to give away all my surprises. Why not? It must not be much of a surprise then. I like you. You're a sassy one. I'm going to save you for last, pretty boy. You think you get to choose who you kill? I ain't talking to you, bait. I'm talking to the fisherman. That's right. He's using you for bait. You're a bubbler. He's throwing you out in the wild, seeing what bites. How you feel about that? You know how that makes me feel? I feel like we've got guns. What do you have? Oh, uh, that's the surprise. Here you go. I'm kind of like a fixer when it comes to independent films. If there's a problem, I usually have enough experience or know-how to kind of either fix the problem or circumvent it one way or the other. 
I've been killed in every Curtis movie. Every single one. I've been oh. shot, except for the alien. I got sh I've been shot in every single Curtis movie. What the alien do? Uh, she's like <laughs> down, you know, like she <laughs> and I died. Came back as like a weird alien zombie thing. You know, being an actor, uh, being on set, I just seeing a lot of stuff and just absorbing stuff, uh, kind of decided, you know, I think I can direct something, you know, by uh, helping other people out. Uh, so, some reason, I never thought that I would be a writer or director, you know, I've just been an actor for a few years. And um, now time came to me, I was in um, Bill and Ted Face the Music, and uh, it, it involves a time machine, and I kind of like that idea because I'm a big fan of uh, Back to the Future also. And uh, I said, you know, I'd like to do a time travel movie, but not be a car, not be a phone booth like they are. So what could I come up with? So I uh, came up with this idea about uh, jail, prison, uh, electric chair. Wow, electric chair. Uh, being a time machine, nobody's ever had that. So uh, I came up with that idea of the electric chair being a time machine. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty as charged. Oh, no, no. We're so sorry, oh, Jamal. What you in for? Speed. And they don't put you in prison for speeding. Pull me over for what I thought was for speeding. What's going on? How was this you? Keep your hands up, sir. But I was framed for murdering a boss. Jamal, you're fired. I think we found the murder weapon. So you killed your boss? No. I just said I was framed. Man, that's what they all say. <laughs> you right, Englewood. Why'd you want to see me, Warden? Today is the fifth anniversary of you being here at our fine institution. And I thought maybe I'd let you out for a little while. What? No, I'm gonna put you on outside work detail. Ward, Evans is gone. What do you mean Evans is gone? Well, I guess he escaped. Yeah, well, he just escaped. I'm trying to prove he didn't do it. How did he escape then? He just walked off of work detail. You let him on work detail? Hey. I see on the news that you created a time machine. Is that true? Well, I need to go back five years to prove that I didn't kill Miss Monroe. When the green light turns on, that means it's ready to go. Are you sure you want to do this? You know, people are like, you make the weirdest, most ridiculous, or, you know, sometimes you make the most violent movies. And I'm like, yeah, it's better than like going out and doing all this stuff for real, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's better to make a movie about, you know, people getting their heads bashed in with a baseball bat than actually go out and do that to somebody. I mean, I, I would never, but you know, it's like, really like, you know, it's an outlet at cer certain points. We just abandon the script. Like there was this one scene where Joey... He had this really long monologue or conversation or something. It was late. We were all tired. And I said, John, you take that plastic baseball bat and you beat his ass to death with it. And so, like, you know, Joey's like, hi, how are you? And he's bam, bam, bam. Robert, just a man I've been wanting to see. Ow! Oh, oh, oh. John hit the chair like we we did it one shot where Joey's in the chair and he's getting hit 
Thank God we did that shot first because then we flipped the camera around and John was hitting the chair so hard. He broke that damn bat in half and I had to fix it. I, I, I fixed it, but you know, like really like, you know, he beat the hell out that chair. Flip the thing. <laughs> Flip it down. Other way, other way. There you go. All right, so walk out and then come in and you have the I'm going to say my line and you just start beating me. All right, action. Robert, just the man I want to see. Oh! I feel like, you know, you gotta have fun with it. If you're not having fun while you're making movies, you're not doing it right. You know, if you're on set and you're grueling over something and you're like, it has to be like this, and you got a blood vessel bursting out of your eye or in your head, that's not the right way to make movies. You know, you're, the whole reason I make movies is to have a blast, you know, and I, every time, you know, I go make a movie, I have a, <laughs> I have a great time, you know. And, I'm not gonna tell you anything about Gaggle except uh it's supposed to be ridiculous like a uh, like tire ridiculous you know uh <laughs>
you know, the Joey's character and Trey's character just standing there watching like, you know, what the hell do we do now? You know, this mummy is dancing with this lady. And then the, the mummy had this really fierce look. He didn't really say, open his, move his mouth and talk, but he would subliminally communicate with people. But what's great is he had this fierce look. And so I said, you know, and I want this, you know, where he looks right at the camera. <laughs> Let's see, the next thing I did with Curtis was I was supposed to do Mississippi Mummy. Uh, John St. Clair, he was supposed to play the lead of the film, but he... Uh, well, I am in Mississippi Mummy, but originally I had a different part in Mississippi Mummy. That, that particular film was interesting because uh, John had opened up an opportunity for us to uh, get filming done at Waverly Mansion, which I thought was really cool. I wound up securing this location, and uh, it, it's a place called Waverly Mansion in West Point, Mississippi. I uh, wound up, you know, securing that for him. You know, it was Mississippi Mummy, and, you know, he wanted the Confederacy to be tied into it because, you know, it's evil and all this, and have the mummy as, you know, part of the Confederacy, and, you know, it, and, you know, having it at the plantation house, you know, really kind of, you know, stuck it to that story. Yeah, the original script, the, the the involvement of the mansion was like one page, and it was like a, you know, 40-page script. And But then, you know, he sent me pictures of this place, and I said, screw the original script, you know, and you just need to rewrite the script and set the whole thing at the mansion. And so I did. And then uh, I got an email from... A casting agency that worked with uh, Women of the Movement, that's a TV show that's going to ABC, they uh, contacted me and wanted me to do uh, some background work. So I went down there and uh, I had to I had to back out of the part. You know, I, I had to I had to back out of Curtis's part. And, you know, the only reason I felt remotely comfortable doing that was uh, because I secured the location, you know. I get there on the day. And the house is being renovated. So the entire thing is gutted. And I, I like, you know, John had told me, he'd warned me, he said, you know, hey, probably be some scaffoldings, you know, at this house, you know, when you get there. And oh, there were some scaffoldings. The whole house was a scaffolding. But, you know, at first, you know, the, part of me in my head was like, you know, oh, God, we can't make a movie here. I just need to call it off and go home. And then the other part of me was like, oh, well, we're here. Let's get it done. So, you know, that's what we did. And as I went along in the day, I realized I liked the fact the house was gutted. I liked the fact the house was covered in, you know, white wrapping paper. The house was a Mississippi mummy. That was cool. It was we were filming a movie inside of a house that was all wrapped up. People are going to say, oh, they're, you know, they watch this movie. They're, I didn't see a mummy in there. There's no bandages. Did you look at the house? I mean, like, really, the whole thing's just, like, you know, wrapped up completely. Um, you know, I wanted, I didn't want to do a guy wrapped up in toilet paper or whatever they wrap mummies up in. I, I thought it'd be more interesting to just let the makeup artist do whatever she wanted. And so she did. And I thought he looked pretty scary, you know, and a lot of people have commented on how interesting he looked. But she put so much makeup on his face that when that guy went home later, he just went, and it was an entire face of makeup, you know. And so he took a picture of the face he peeled off. We actually went out to eat after we filmed, and so we went to a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> and so he was just kind of nonchalantly sitting in the middle of the table, and Joey looked over, and there's some boys sitting at another table, and so he was, like, walking by him to go to the restroom, and I think he, he turned and he said, you guys want to meet a mummy? And so, you know, these boys, you know, got to meet the Mississippi mummy and some of them got their pictures taken with him. And I thought that was pretty neat. You know, uh, that, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun though. It's, it's, it's fun, you know, when you can, uh, you know, bond with the people that you're, you know, making films with and really enjoy yourself on set. <laughs> Wilson, what are you doing here, man? I'm actually here trying to find a missing person. Who's missing? Angela Douglas. That name ring a bell? Hello. Can I help you? Yes, I'm Angelie Douglas. I'm actually here for um, the, one of the tours. Mr. Rothschild's expecting you.
Yeah, she's here. She's touring the house. He's there, and he's getting in my head. And Have you ever heard of Jonathan Curtis Nix? I'm, I'm hearing voices. He is in my head. Greetings. I saw you when you came in. We didn't see you. I was hiding away in the shadow. I, uh, one reason I stay so busy is because uh, it helps. Um, you know, I'm, I've got depression, so you know, if I stay busy, you know, it helps. You know, me stay happy because you know I have productive things to do and projects to work on. So, something like, uh, like I said, it's something I really enjoy doing. And um, you know, I had a friend, uh, you know, my friend Aaron. You know, so I made, you know, he's my friend, my best friend from. The time I moved to Mississippi, you know, the time he passed away, so it was like 12 years, you know, and 10 of those years we spent making films, and so, um, you know, Aaron, we always enjoyed making films, and it, it would just seem uh, senseless to stop, you know, you know, so I keep going, and uh, now Aaron is the Saint Studios logo, you know, so he's the Saint Studios logo, and every uh movie opens with in loving memory of Aaron so
What do you think, Rathbone? <laughs> I just hope, you know, when Aaron looks down from heaven, he's happy to see that I'm, you know, still making films. And I, I'm hoping that I'm making films that he would have enjoyed watching, you know, if he was still alive. I've made around 60 films.